All right, so, uh, yeah, this video is basically going to be just me talking about my experience and the, the whole process of shipping a car out overseas. Just going through the whole military process of processing your car overseas, basically. That's what this video is going to be about. So, I got notified back in November, right before Thanksgiving, on, uh, on orders to come out here. So, that gives you like a good uh, like eight to nine months out so you can get all your stuff ready, get your, 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 all your business affairs in order, also get your, your family situated and pay your bills, do whatever you got to do to get yourself ready to mentally and physically uh, relocate to a different area. So that being said, I got the notification back in, no in November, so I knew around... You know, April-ish, May, I had to make sure my car was shipped out because the process does take a while for them to put it on a crate and bring it all the way out here. May 5th is when I got here. Well, actually, May 6th. I flew out May 5th. And uh, May 6th, I got here. And I was without a car for a good, I'll say, maybe three weeks, four weeks, which is not bad knowing, knowing that I shipped my car out uh, the first week of April. So... I shipped my car out the first week of April, brought my car back uh, three weeks after I got here. So that's pretty much like a good, almost basically a good two months of me without a car. So it hurt, but at the same time, you know, I'm glad I did that around that time because shipping my, my furniture and my clothes and all my personal belongings actually took a lot longer because I waited the month that I was leaving to ship my stuff, so which I would never do it again. But yeah, that actually took like a good two months of me just not having none of my stuff, and yeah, that was painful, but, but yeah, so, the way the process works is, so you get all your paperwork done, you, you go through uh, our processing, whatever the case is, but you get all your documentation, make sure you have all your, your, your uh, personal paperwork for the car, make sure everything's in your name, so you can't have, like, your wife's name on the car, or you can't have it under somebody else's name, it has to be under your name, otherwise they won't let you ship it. Um, so make sure you have all that documentation. Then you have to find the nearest VPC. So a VPC is a vehicle processing center. So I was stationed in McDill Air Force Base, which is located in Tampa. So the nearest VPC to that was actually in, uh, in Atlanta. So you can't just, you can try, but I don't recommend it. But you, can, you can't just pop up and say, hey, um, I got a car that I got to ship out. Can you guys take care of this? You have to make an appointment. So... They don't make appointments over the phone. You have to go to their website. You can just Google it, and it'll pop up, like, VPCs in the, local, in the area. And then you, they'll give you, like, the, the number for the, the place, or they'll give you the, 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 the actual uh, contact information so you can talk to somebody and then pretty much just go through the process with them over the phone. But everything has to be scheduled over, or online um, at that website. So you go online, you pick the date that you want to actually go over there and see them. You have to make sure you're there because usually... There's a lot of people that go to VPCs that want to get uh, want to get their car shipped. So you don't want to just pop up around a time frame where it's real busy, and then next thing you know, you're waiting there all day, and they never get to see you, and then they close because they do have a, a set schedule time where they do close. So, um, but yeah, so I made an appointment. Contact I contacted them first, made sure I had everything I needed, made sure I had all the paperwork I needed. Uh, make sure USA was uh, uh, aware because USA has to give them the go like hey yeah um, if you have insurance with them I had insurance with them has to give them the okay so I have to give them author authorization letter say hey yeah he it's okay for him to ship the car out there then I had to make sure all that stuff was printed out I had multiple copies of my orders so then I made an appointment with them around like one o'clock so that way I can that, that would give me more than enough time to wake up early in the morning get breakfast do what I got to do and drive all the way out there and get there with ample time to play around with because when you get over there they're gonna tell you that they do not take any car that is filthy or dirty or has a has a anything inside that's all messed up if you have any uh, uh, defects in your car on your car like if you have any outstanding um, uh, issues that you have to get uh, fixed with like, like your warranty or whatever the case is like an airbag like my situation with an airbag I had that recall pop up when I went to their website and they don't take any cars that have any recalls on them. So you have to make sure that your car is recall free. Any service issues, anything you have, you make sure you take care of it and you get it fixed up and cleaned up or taken care of ASAP. Because if you try to ship your car and they find any of that stuff in the system, they will not take it. And then you're, you're pretty much screwed. So 
So I made sure that the recall situation was taken care of. Uh, my airbag situation was the problem. And then they told me that uh, I contacted the nearest BMW uh, shop and they told me that they don't have that part and they haven't had that part in a while. So I was getting a little nervous, like, hey, I'm letting you know right now that um, I'm on military orders and I need this like ASAP, otherwise I cannot ship my car. So after I told them that, they was like, all right, we'll see what we can do. Um, uh, the, the people over there at the VPC was like, hey, yeah, if you can't get it done, just get like an authorization letter from them. Uh, I tried to get an authorization letter from them and being the BMW shop was like, yeah, yeah, we don't give out authorization number, uh, letters, we don't make those. But um, we'll try our best to get that part to you as soon as possible. Within two or three days, I got a call from headquarters. And headquarters is like, hey, we heard your situation. Um, yeah, we'll let you know as soon as we, uh, as, we as soon as we ship it out. Uh, the next day, they, they expedited it overnight. And I got the part in and got everything taken care of within four days. So altogether, like four days. So that was pretty cool. Shout out to BMW uh, USA because they really took care of me and, and helped me out. Um, so I got that taken care of right before I had to leave, and then I drove uh, all the way out to Atlanta, uh, registered in, got everything taken care of. USA gave me the wrong letter, so that took a while for them to fax that right, the right authorization letter. So I got that taken care of. I had to go find a place to go wipe my car down because they don't. Once again, they do not take your car if it's dirty, if it has any bugs in it or anything. So I had to take it to like the nearest Walmart, get some cleaning supplies, wipe it down real quick. I couldn't find a car a car wash spot around the area. So after I got that nice and cleaned up, made sure everything was wiped down, brought it back. And they actually do a thorough inspection. So they have like the lights on it. They make sure they check any dents or dings or scratches. They annotate every little piece because they don't want to pay for anything. They want to make sure that whatever the car came in is how you're getting it back. So then they give you a box with all the uh, all your loose personal items as far as like your cup holders. Uh, they give you like your uh, your license plate uh, pieces or like stuff like this, they will just uh, leave it in a box and then they'll put it in the trunk. However, they do recommend keeping your car free of anything. So if you have any paperwork or anything in your car, uh, tools, whatever, take all that stuff out and keep it with you because yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be something that they're not responsible for. Anything that's loose, they're not responsible for. So after they got they gave they gave me that um, pretty much, uh, I gathered all my stuff, signed the paperwork. Uh, they give you an estimated time when they expect your car to arrive in the in the new country and yeah it's pretty much the process and then you just you can track it online at their website they'll give you a tracking number and you can track the process of your car now um and then uh, and then after i was done with that just pretty much me and my girl was, we just flew back uh we we stood the night in uh, atlanta and then we flew back to, t to tampa the next day but uh yeah, pretty much the, that was the whole process. It took like a good eight eight hours to drive out there, so it wasn't that bad of a ride. It was pretty pretty simple. It wasn't hard to get to getting out there, but um, yeah, that's the that's the entire process. Um, then when I when when I finally got over here, I was tracking the, the process of my car, just checking to see where it's at, and there's only usually one port that it has to go to before it comes to you. So once you see that on your notification log that hey it reached uh, it reached this port and the, the port is in Germany that you know for a fact, all right, I'm going to get it within this week. So I kept on checking every day, every day, every day I was out here. And then um, the third week I was here, I got a notification saying, hey, your, uh, your, your vehicle is in the port of something. I can't remember, but it's a German port. And as soon as I seen that, I was like, all right, it was on like a Monday. And I got my car back on like a Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember, but it's pretty quick. So yeah, that was my entire experience. Got the car in, checked for it, made sure there was nothing wrong with my car. Well, however, I did have a big issue with when I received my car, and that issue was um, as soon as I picked the car up and I signed for everything, I made sure nothing was wrong with it. I was good to go. The next day, I started getting that uh, that tires, the tire light, the low tire pressure light, constantly would come on like every every day, and I was like, what the hell is going on? So thank God on base, and I was staying on base. Thank God on base, they had um the air compressor machine on base that you can fill your car your, your tires with because i was there every day trying to get my uh my tire filled out my rear tire so I was, it was annoying the fuck out of me so i'm like damn i must gotta i must have like a nail or something in it because obviously like you know i didn't have no problems with my tires i mean they was a little little low but they wasn't ready to get changed out so i was like what the fuck is going on so uh, i take it to the auto hobby spot on base uh take it off mount it up and then i check it out 
And uh, the tire has two big ass nails. I'm talking about like this big. No, I'm not even exaggerating. Two big ass nails. One nail broke off the side of it, and the other nail was like, I literally had to pull it out sideways, and it was like this. So I'm like, that obviously happened when it was on the truck with Thug, because that shit is crazy. Like, that, I don't know. It's like some industrial shit, and the, and the area that you dropped your car off in is kind of like that. It looks like a fucking warehouse. So I pulled, my, I pulled that big-ass tire out, and I was like, God damn. So now I know, like, next time, whenever you get your car back, check everything like check the tires make sure all the tires are good make sure there's no nails in them so if you didn't drop it off like that then they got to pay for it so that being said just make sure you check all your tires make sure you check your lights make sure you check check uh, under your car if you can because they were just trying to hurry up and get me to sign and, and, and give me the keys and be out because once i sign the paperwork they're not liable for anything well technically they are they, they still are you have like a i think a, 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 a time period where you can still like argue some 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 things you find later on but i mean it still gives you that peace of mind like hey i checked everything and i made sure everything was straight and i, I didn't find anything wrong with my car so but um yeah that was my experience it was a little headache but it wasn't too bad thank god because i heard some horror stories with other people so thank god i'm you know i got my car in one piece uh, my baby's here um, we're back together and she drives good and i have no other problems besides the tires no, no scratches, no, no dents, no, no issues with people stealing my tires. I heard people's tires were, or their rims were stolen. I heard people had like their mufflers dropped on uh, or ripped apart or like stupid shit, like bumpers coming off. So, I mean, I got lucky. So, I mean, yeah. So if you, if you are in the military or whatever, and you're planning on shipping your car overseas or you're planning on uh, just, just moving uh, as a civilian overseas, or whatever, and you plan on shipping your car, and these are things you gotta just be, be prepared for. I mean, it is a process. Just make sure you plan accordingly and make sure you uh, give yourself more than enough time to ship your car out and and, and and be able to survive without transportation for a while. I mean, you can always rent a car and stuff, but out here in Europe, it's expensive as hell. And uh, shout out to my boy Jim Martinez because he hooked me up when I shipped my car out from Tampa because I had a car the whole time I was I was there until I had to leave because of my dude. So shout out to you at uh, uh, Jim Martinez at Fab Factory. Yeah, uh, if you like this video, please press that like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll keep throwing some more videos like this out uh, with my experiences and stuff like that, uh, especially with my M3. And uh, yeah, just let me know what you think. If you have any similar experiences or if, if you're in the military and uh, you have any horror stories, I would love to hear those because yeah, I've heard a lot. And every time I hear them, it surprised me for them. So yeah, so uh, as always, uh, take care, be safe and God bless. Keep showing love everybody, take care.